It is 5 p.m. Eastern Time on the dot, and we are getting ready to do another day of Leak Code Live. Happy Monday, everyone. If you're still working, I hope that you can get through the workday. If you're ending your workday like me here in Eastern Time, I hope that the day has been awesome for you. Happy Monday. Looking forward to getting started strong this week. I have a short week ahead of me. I have Friday off this week. Our company is giving us Friday off. So I'm really looking forward to just taking off some downtime. And of course, with Labor Day weekend coming up, I also have Monday. So it's a nice long weekend for me. I cannot wait for that. Let's do a quick recap of where we currently are. We're currently sitting at 218 questions. So continuing to make progress. Our next big milestone sitting at the 300 and 300 question mark. Remember, if you're new to the channel, if you want to do some more leak code, you can always visit my YouTube channel. It's leak code live on there. You can find my leak code live easy collection playlist where you're going to be exposed to every single stream we have done since day zero. And on each one of these different videos, you can find chapters for easy navigation. And of course, you can find links to all the different leak code questions that we cover. And on top of that, if you want some extra practice, a nice way to keep track of your progress, you can always visit my website, raphaelslist.com. And on that website, you're going to be able to search for some questions that we've done previously. You'll be able to click on the stream clip links, which will take you to the exact chapter in the video where we covered that question. And of course, you can keep track of your progress like so, which is nice. And you see this nice progress bar increasing up here as we go. And I'm always increasing this amount of questions every time we finish a couple of them on the streams, assuming that we get to some good ones. So without further ado, let's go ahead and resume from where we left off yesterday. And let's see where we are today. Looking very much forward to it. So it looks like today, I think we might be on longest night substring because I think these are always switching. A lot of times these are switching, so you never really know what's what. But I believe it's longest night substring. I don't think we did this one. Okay, I think we can go ahead and give this one a shot. I don't recall this one, so let's go for it. A string S is nice if for every letter of the alphabet that S contains, it appears both in uppercase and lowercase. For example, A, B, A, B, B is nice because A and A appear and B and B appear. However, A, B, A is not because B appears, but B does not. Given a string S, return the longest substring of S that is nice. If there are multiple within the substring of the earliest occurrence, if there are none, return an empty string. Okay, so I do understand what this is telling us to do. Let's see, A, A, A is a nice string because A, A is the only letter of the alphabet in S, and both A and A appear. A is the longest nice substring. B, B is a nice string because both B and B appear, and the whole string is a substring. There are no nice substrings. Okay, so let's think about how we can do this. For some reason, I mean, let's think of it as if we were humans, right? Well, wait, we are humans. Let's think of it as if it's a human solving the question, not a computer, not a leak code problem. Trying to solve, not some code we put in leak code trying to solve the question. That's what I mean. So if I start going through this, you know, I might ask myself, like, it, it needs to be a substring that contains all, okay, and it can't have any more, both upper, okay. So like Y and A, this could be a nice substring. This could be a nice substring. Now we have two A's, or rather we have the, the two A that matches. We have another A here and we have another Y. Like this whole thing would have been a nice substring if Z was also included twice. So it's almost like, could we do like a sliding window here? I think we might be able to do a sliding window, but it becomes tricky to know when we slide left, when we slide right. Give me one moment. Sorry about that. I just had a massive yawn that I wanted to do off mic so you all wouldn't hear me. I mean, sometimes you just got to let it out, right? You just got to let a nice yawn out. So let's see. We do have a hundred here. What if I were to take the frequency of everything first, and that way I knew if the counterpart of each one of these existed, what, what does that mean? Like if I had the frequency of all these characters and I stopped at the Y, I could say, well, yes, there is a Y. Yes, there is an uppercase A. From here on out, is there an uppercase Z? No, there's not. So I know like, I guess really nothing here can be 
uh, considered a nice string because if we start here or if we start here so the earliest we can start is here and I guess we just continue asking that question like from here on out do we have one 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 I kind of just like came up with this now but I feel like that's a good way to go about it since we have uppercase and lowercase English letters I think what I'll do is I'll make a new array that's the size of the ASCII table so 127 characters and then we'll just store each character in its own respective place what do I mean by that let's let's come up with this let's say const frequency equals or maybe not oh I guess const frequency is okay const frequency is a new array let's make this size 127 and let's fill this up with zero what I want to do is for const c of s, c is, I, I denote as character, that's why I call it c. So for const character of string s, we're going to do each one of these things. What I want to do is inside of frequency, let's just get index c dot car code at zero. This time I'm not going to normalize it. A lot of times you might see me normalizing it, like doing a minus 97. That's to make it so that a lowercase a maps to zero, lowercase b to one. But since this is both uppercase and lowercase, and I have the size of the ASCII table, I'm just going to go ahead and leave it like this. And then I'll say frequency at this index plus or equals one. And now let's see. So let's say let start index equals zero let n index equals zero and let's see what we can do here actually i think i'm going to have start index equals zero and then i'll do for let i equals to zero i less than s dot length i plus plus so what is it that i want to see what is it that i want to do for each one of these first it'd be nice to know if like if it's uppercase or if it's lowercase do something right i think that's like that would be a nice thing to do let me just double check something okay yeah it'd be nice if i said like if it's an up, if it's an uppercase thing, do something. If it's lowercase, do something else. So what we could do is we could just check for uppercase. So and I'm actually going to make a function for this just to make it a little bit easier to read. So I'll say const is uppercase. This will take a character, and I'm going to actually use some regex here. So could we do? Let's see. If I do a regex of a through z, right, and then we say dot test c, this should come back as true if it's uppercase. So here we can say if is if is uppercase s of i, and let's actually do this to make it even easier. I'll say const c for character is s of i. So if is uppercase c, we're gonna do one thing else we're going to do something else so what i'm thinking of doing here is i can essentially continue making my string longer as long as for each one of these indices there's always a corresponding character on the other side so what that means is if i'm looking at an uppercase character i want to know if at some point there will be a y but i also just realized something it's not like it can't just be let's think about this it can't just be a Y, but it also needs to exist after, right? It needs to also exist in an index that's after where I currently am at. So do I want to maybe augment my data structure? Right now I'm just keeping a frequency. So the frequency might tell me, yeah, there does exist one, but then we might get to a case where we're like at this Y, and I do say there's an uppercase, but it's actually in the index before. So I think what I can do Let's see. Hmm, because there might be there might be more than just one, right? It might be like y, like here we can have another y at the end. I'm trying to think if I might be able to do this like can we do this backwards instead? Have a y, an a, an a. I have an A, I have a Z. Is that like, maybe maybe that kind of like lends itself to a sliding window. Hmm. I guess really I'm just looking for, 
Like if I see a Y, I need to find the next Y and the Y is all the way over here. But then what do I start doing? Like if it's A, how do I even know that I've ever seen an A before? Return the substring of the earliest occurrence. I feel like this part, the earliest occurrence, lends itself well to having like, to having some data structure keep track of these things. If I knew, yeah, I might, I might do that actually. If I knew like where, or maybe, maybe, maybe at any given point, I can also say which ones I've seen. Hmm. Because these aren't, this is not like unique or anything, right? No, it's not. Oh, and I feel that, I feel like we were close. I'm just getting, I'm getting tripped up with like duplicates. I thought, okay, let's go over this again, right? I come to a Y and if I'm here and I know that at some point after this index, there's a lowercase Y, then I can consider this one. I get to an A, okay, I know there's one after. And then I get to the Z and I say, well, there's nothing after Z that is an uppercase Z. So it could like, it could only start from here. So now I start asking the same thing. Is there another A? Is there an uppercase A? Yes. If I get to this A, is there a lowercase A? Yes. But I guess it doesn't, it also doesn't even, it also doesn't even need to come afterwards, right? Because is this A, if there was just like A, A, that could be a nice string because in this one, yeah, like B, B, right? So maybe this is not actually the best way to go about it. I thought I thought maybe we were close to it. Let's think though. If I wanted to do sliding window here, but maybe I also shouldn't get too fixed up on sliding window. Maybe sliding window is not the way to do it. How would I do this if I'm looking at this? I guess I always want to know what I've seen so far. So like I've seen, if I'm if I'm going through this, I can say, well, I've seen an uppercase Y, and then when I've seen A, I've seen a lowercase, zero, I've seen one, A, okay, I've seen two. What does that really tell me though? A, I've seen one. When do I stop? When's the, when's the point that we stop? It appears both in uppercase and lowercase. For example, A, B, A, B, B is nice because A and A appear and B and B appear. However, A, B, A is not because B appears, but B does not. I almost feel like, what's the ratio to this? Okay, so more people do like this question, but I might be overthinking this. I might be overthinking this. I guess if at any point in this string, hmm. the longest nice, the longest nice substring. I have an A, I have a Y. So what if I said, oh yeah, this would like all be a nice substring. How would I be able to remove the Z? How would I know? I mean, do we just want like Y A, this one appears once. Okay, so then A A, but then Y, that would also just appear A A A. But Y also appears only once. Does it also matter if these are, hmm, can we make this case insensitive? ABA is not because B appears, but B does not. Given a string S, return the longest substring of S that is nice. S dot length is less than or equal to 100. This, this makes me think, this makes me think like there's a trick that we can probably do to this. If we have the frequencies of everything, okay, there is a pairing to the Y. There's two A's, so that's fine. Get to Z, there's only one. We get to A, 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 and then we get to Y. 
I mean, can I just keep track of the last place? What if I... What if I keep track of the ones I've seen so far? And I get to Z. No, that wouldn't work because there could be a capital Z somewhere else. Interesting. Or if I had the information when I got to the Z, if I knew that there was no uppercase Z, again, I'm going with the frequency thing. Because there always needs to be like one of both. So I do feel like that could help. For sure, taking the frequency must help a little bit, right? We get to YAZ and we know there's no other Z. So I already know that my, my nice string can only start from here. Now, how do I remove, like, what if I also said, okay, if I know from here, I can't do anything, then I need to make sure that there's like, hmm, something like, any character I find after needs to exist after this point. That might be, I might be overthinking this though. And because we are approaching, I normally like to give myself close to 20 minutes per easy question. So I'll spend about two more minutes on this. And if we don't get to it, we'll just get to the next one. A string S is nice if for every letter of the alphabet S contains, it appears both in uppercase and lowercase. A, B, and A, B, B appear. However, A, B, A is not because B appears, but B does not. A, A, A is a nice string because A, A is the only letter of the alphabet in S, and both A and A appear. It's the longest nice substring. Y A Z. If I get to here, there's another Y, but it exists before the point that we found it, so forget about it. And then you have these two that are like super easy examples. Like when it's examples like this, is to me it's like a little annoying because they're they're very like perfect, almost contrived examples, right? It's just hard to think about it when it's short like this. I also don't like, I guess one of the rules I have is like first go at a question, we'll give it 20 minutes, we'll try and solve it, you know, easy question. If we don't solve it, that's fine. We'll probably revisit this in, an, in a weekly roundup. And during weekly roundups, then I probably will look at related topics. But I'm going to go ahead because I also started a little earlier than whatever the time is saying. So I'm going to go ahead and go to the next one. That way you guys watching can hopefully get you know, more quantity of questions under your belt instead of me just focusing on one for the entire stream. So let's look at this one. Longest subsequence with a limited sum. This looks like a better question. I mean, last one, there also was a better like to dislike ratio, but this one's even more so. So let's check out what this one has to offer. We're given an integer array nums of length n and an integer array queries of length m. Return an answer of length m where answer i is the maximum size of a subsequence that you can take from nums such that the sum of its elements is less than or equal to queries i. Check something. Okay. A subsequence is an array that can be derived from another array by deleting some or no elements without changing the order of the remaining elements. Okay. This is always, these types of questions are always scary. 4521 queries 31021. So let's see. Return array answer i, where answer i is the maximum size of a subsequence that you can take from nums, such that the sum of its elements is less than or equal to queries i. Well, I feel like there's one, I guess, maybe like easy way to do this. Like what if, if I sorted nums, right? Like this is what we get in the beginning. Four, five, two, one. If I sorted this to be one, two, four, five, uh, three, ten, twenty one. Subsequence two, one has a sum less than or equal to three. OK. 
okay? It can be proven that two, so when we say two, one, it can be proven that two is the maximum size of such a subsequence. So answer zero is two, right? Okay, and then we want 10. Uh, we can do four, six, and seven, but we can't include this one. Now, if I did it the other way, that's only two, but it can be three. Okay, yeah, I almost think like we could, I feel like we can sort it and then we can take like a prefix sum. So imagine this was it like sorted. And now if we do a prefix sum, this is one, this is three, this is seven, and this is 12. I think now we just need to find I mean, it, we, we can even actually do like a binary search here if we try to find, so imagine imagine sorting it was like n log n and then creating a prefix sum was O of n and then doing a binary search for each one of the different queries. I feel like that could be a way of approaching it and the sorting it really helps with that. Now, if we didn't sort it, if I didn't sort it and I just did a prefix sum, it's gonna to be tough because here for like 10, we might be thinking that it's just four and nine. And then, but then like this would be 11 and this would be 12. So we, again, we'd be tempted to think it's just four and five, which is nine, but really we can do one, two and four, which is seven and that's three. So, which is why this one's three, it has a sum less than or equal to Unless they're also just, and this is longest subsequence with limited sum. Hmm. So should we sort it or is this just implying that like, has a sum less than or equal to three? Four, five, two, one has a sum less. So if we did two, three, four, five, there's nothing in there. We can try doing all this and seeing what that come like what that ends up being. I mean, let's go for it. Let, let's just see what happens. Const sorted nums equals nums dot sort a b. We'll do this piece to sort it in increasing order, and then we can say const prefix sum is an empty array. Actually, we'll start it off with nums of zero. For let i equals one, i less than nums dot length, i plus plus. We'll do nums dot push, nums dot push of, uh, this should be sorted nums of zero, nums dot push sorted nums of i plus. Let's do prefix sum dot push sorted nums of i plus prefix sum of i minus one. All right, so prefix sum dot push. Here we'll do sorted nums of i, which is two plus one, so that's three. We'll push three. Then here we'll do sorted nums of i four plus prefix sum i minus one two. So that will be four. Yeah, four plus the one that we pushed before. Okay, cool. So that should give us our prefix sum. Let's go ahead and print some of these things out to see what we're dealing with. One, three, seven, twelve. Okay. Now really it would be nice to find the largest, like the largest index that's less than or equal to the current query. So something like, let's see, for const n, for const q of queries, we're now going to do a binary search where that is our target. Something like const get index equals, let's see, target. There might be a much easier way of doing this, but I think this is kind of cool to practice a lot of different things. So let's say let low equals zero, let mid 
let high equals sorted nums dot length minus one while low is less than or equal to high if sorted well now we, it's like a modified binary search right we're never well i don't think we're gonna find the target let's see if i try to do if i try to look for 10 Yeah, what I need to find is inside of my prefix sum, 13712, like what happens if I'm looking for 10? I have low and I have high. Right, so I'll do 0 plus 3 divided by 2 is 1. My mid will be right here. This is less than 10, so make my low this. My low is going to be 7. 0, 1, 2 plus 3 divided by 2, that's 2. So this is my mid. It's less than less than 10. So make this right here. And I guess, what if I were just to return that? What if instead of doing low minus high, low minus high, I just leave it, left it at this? Would that work? If it's 0, just return 0? Let me see something. I'm going to try something now for fun. While low is less than high, if sorted, if sorted nums, while low is less than high, so will it just break? It'll, it'll never actually find the number? Or is the case that it can, right? If sorted nums of mid is equal to target or mid is equal to zero, uh, return mid. But really it should be, yeah, this is interesting because if it's, if it's mid equals target or mid equals zero, return mid, else we'll do else um, low equals mid plus one else if sorted nums of mid is less than target else if sorted nums of mid is greater than target i equals mid minus one down here we'll just return low this will give us the index now there's a couple things we need to do though for const q of queries, const. Now this should be, oh, the target is gonna be, okay, for const q of queries, I think we're actually trying to find, I'm not trying to find this in sorted nums, right? I'm trying to find this in prefix sum, in prefix sum. Yeah, so let's move all of this. Let's see, for const index equals get index of q, that's our target. If index equals to zero, let's see, const result is an array. If index equals zero, I'll just do result.push zero, else result.push index minus one, index minus one, and then return result. Kind of did like a lot of stuff here, so I really want to look through it. So we have four, five, two, one starting as our nums, right? We immediately are going to sort this to make it one, two, four, five. And then we're gonna come up with our prefix sum, which is 13712 down here, right? Now we have this get index function. Let me just move this down here, right? So for const q of queries, for const three, I wanna find the index of three inside of uh, const result, or inside of prefix sum. So imagine we had low and high Okay, low and high. 
So 0, 1, 2, 3 plus 0 divided by 2, that's 1. So this is my mid right here. So immediately, I already found it, right? Like, while well, low is less than high, if prefix sum of mid is equal to target, then we can return mid. And then here, I can push result result.push index minus 1. I don't want to do index minus 1, right? It can be proven that 2 is the maximum size of such a subsequence. I think here, I actually want to do index plus 1. Because I found it at 1, so I want to make it 2 so that 3 and 1 are considered. Or not, yeah, I guess not 3 and 1, but rather the array that starts, that has a length of 2. Okay, so we'll do that. That's 3. Now let's look for 10. For 10, we're going to have mid here. Mid is less than target, so low equals mid plus 1. We'll set our low here. 2 plus 3 is 5, divided by 2 is 2, so mid is here. Mid is less than target, so low equals, let's see, low is equal to uh, mid plus 1. Now these are equal to each other, though, so now we return low, which is 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 1, as a sum less than or equal to 10, it can be proven that 3 is the maximum size of such a subsequence. So answer 1 is 3. See, this will be nice, though, because this 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. This one, this one should be index. But then this one's just 1. 1, 2, 3, 4. 4, 5, 1. 1 minus 0. Yeah, that's just 1. That becomes a little tricky there because how does that work though? Like why does 0, 1, 2, 3? I think it's because here I got to the one where, oh yeah, this one's exactly it though. So maybe here I shouldn't return. Maybe here I should return. If it's equal to target, I should return mid plus 1. Queries one, but if you never found it, return low. Yeah, something in here, something in here is not right. Let me let me revisit this because if I'm looking for three, I'm looking for three, but mid is three in this case. So I do want to return mid plus one, so I get the full size of this. In this case, mid is less than 10. Here, mid is still less than 10. So I go here. That's greater than 10. But still, it's already, well, if I, if I say less than or equal to, this is greater than 10. So high. Yeah, that's tricky. I feel like we're so close, but... Feel like we're close but we're, we're missing something here we're just missing the it's like such an easy thing maybe i can also not do a binary search it's not really going to be very elegant but to get the question right we could just look through our prefix sum and the first time as soon as we go above our number i think that's what we return so if I have 1, 3, 7, and 12, and I'm looking for, let's imagine we have this again, right? If I'm looking for 3, I get to 7, so I return 7. If I'm looking for 10, I get to here, so I return 3. And then, yeah, I think we can also do that too. I don't, it's, I don't think it's the nicest thing, but let's see. I can do get index. I just really want to try this out for const q of queries. For let i equals zero, i less than prefix sum dot length, i plus plus, if prefix sum of i is greater than q, then result dot push i. Let's see what this gives us. 
Ah, okay, but this is already out of bounds. So for that I equals zero, I less than prefix, I less than or equal to, that's not gonna work, right? I less than or equal to prefix sum. If prefix sum of I is greater than Q, result dot push I. We can also have like, we can also do something in here like if, if Q is greater than prefix sum of prefix sum dot length minus one, we just do result dot push prefix sum dot length. And then else, we can actually just do this. Let's see what happens if we run this. Two, three, three, four. So why is it that we're getting multiple right now? So four, five, two, one, we have three queries. If Q is greater than prefix sum, one, three, seven, 12, no, it's not, else. Oh, result.push and then we should break, right? Result.push I and then we should break. Yeah, not not digging this question so much. Well, okay, I like the question, but I realize that I'm, I'm getting a little bit sloppy here and I'm not in love with that. Let's see what we get though, two, three, four, and zero, two, three, four, and zero. Should we submit it? Let's go ahead and submit it and see what happens. Interesting. So expected one, really? So the prefix sum for cons Q of query, zero, one, if, so if it should be greater than or equal to, we should just return one. Okay. So we got it right, but hear me out. Like I think really what we should do is we should make it so instead of, cause this is gonna do n searches every single time, but we could instead, I mean, we already have a bottleneck of sorted nums up here, right? This is n log n, this is another n operation. And then here will be, you know, like q, q times log n, q log n. So I mean, it's a lot of stuff happening I'm very, I really want to see what discussions say. Is there a way to do it without sorting? Okay, binary search. So if they do a binary search, they're sorting it, right? M log N plus N. Okay, cool. So I think, I think we're on the right track here. It's mostly just figuring out this binary search here. I wonder, it'd be nice if like there was a way for me to unmark a question so we can get to it before. But, and maybe this is not what you all we want to necessarily hear, but we should, we should, we should get to this. I'm just looking at the time and I'm thinking what's more worth it for me to do this one, for me to do this one again, or just figure out, we essentially want to find the, let me see, the first number. Oh no, not the first number. We want to go as high as we can. Right? In our in our prefix sum, we want to find the first number that's equal to or greater than. Yeah, we can keep going up or down depending on those constraints. And I really feel like we were close to this here. I might just I'm gonna I'm just gonna take that one and let's get to the next one. You're given an integer array ranks and a character array suits. You have five cards where the ith card has a rank of ranks i and a suit of suits i. Following are the types of poker hands you can make from best to worst. Flush five cards of the same suit, three of a kind, three cards of the same rank. Pair two cards of the same rank, high card any single card. Return a string representing the best type of poker hand you can make with the given cards. So ranks 13 to given into array ranks and a character array suits. Yeah, five cards, okay. 
where the ith card has a rank of rank i and suits of suits i. Okay. The hand with all the cards consists of five cards. D, A, A, B, C, three of a kind. The hand with the first, second, and fourth card consists of three cards with the same rank. I see. A, B, C, A, D. Do we do? So we have a pair. The hand with the first and second card consists of two cards of the same rank. So we have a pair. So are we just trying to see suits A, A, A? I guess does the, it really matters of the suits, right? Uh, five card of the same suit, three of the same rank, three of the same rank, or any single card. So we're either gonna have suits that are all the same, or we're going to have uh, one of these that's three, at least three, so let me see, we don't have any that are two, but we do have some that are three. The hand with the first, second, and fourth card consists with the same rank. Not that we could also make a pair hand, but three of a kind is a better hand. So I guess what we can do is we can first check to see if we can have, let's see. I mean, can we just say, and they just want us to return, return a string flush. So we can say if suits dot every suit, suit is equal to suits at zero. And we can return flush, right? That's what it means for that first one. That everything is equal to the first one. So that's the first thing out of like out of there already. I think what we can do now <clears throat> is we can just start going from left to right. Any single card. And what happens with high card? Do we just oh okay, okay. We can just start going from left to right, and if we ever get to a two or three. Hmm, but if yeah I don't want I don't want to preemptively choose a two I definitely want to go through all of them first so let's let's get a frequency of the rank let's see ranks less than or equal to 13 so we can say const rank frequency is a new array of size. I'm going to make it 14. And then what we'll say is we'll do for const r of ranks, we'll say rank frequency of r plus or equals 1. Now, how do we prioritize now? Like I should always, I should always pick a three if I can. But I also don't want to like, I don't want to go through the whole, I don't want to go through all the ranks and say like, for any of these, does a three exist? Like for any of these, are there three of three or more of any of them? I definitely can't do an else either. Well, I can't do an else in that case. I need to first check for three, and then I also need to check for, hmm. I mean, I suppose we, I mean, we really could. We can say for const r of rank frequency. 
if r greater than or equal to three, we can return three of a kind. Can we do the same thing for the next one if it's greater than or equal to greater than or equal to three? If it's equal to two, then we can return what is it? A pair. Else at the end we just return high card. Like is this how it could work? Let me see if we run this, what happens? Flush high card, high card, flush three of a kind, pair. Wow. Okay, wait, for const R of ranks. Oh, wait, 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 wait. I know why. Because I'm supposed to be doing this with for const S. How many how many of the suits do we have? A, B, C, and D. Okay, so it's very. Let's actually do this. Let's do suit frequency. We'll make this a new array of size four. And I'll say for const S of suits, I'll say const index equals S dot car code at zero minus 97 suit frequency of index plus or equals one. And then we'll say for const s of suit frequency, if s greater than or equal to three, s of suit frequency, if s equals two, return pair. Let's try this one out. Wait, same thing. Const suit frequency, for const s of suits, const index, so suit frequency of index plus or equals one for const s of suite frequency. Is it because I'm not actually, but const s should be, is s here not the actual? I just wanna see something here. I feel like this should be giving me nan. Oh, wait a second. I think it's probably because of this right here. Let me go ahead and remove this console log. Flush, pair, and pair. Okay, so it's almost like the same thing we had before, but now this is a pair, three of a kind. Let's see why that might be, and I shouldn't have removed this yet. Let me get that there again. So four, four, two, four, four, but we have D here. D A A B C. There's like so many, so many numbers here. Okay, numbers. So this, I put what for this one? Flush pair, but it should be a three of a kind. Okay. Four, 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 two, four, four. Let me. How do we? Two, two, two. I just want to. I just want to do this. It's too many things being printed out. Two one 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 for const for const s of suits const index okay for const s of suit frequency it's two of one one oh interesting and this is saying it's three of a I'm getting so confused here. I keep, okay, flush should be five of the same suit. So I think we were actually right before. This should have been rank frequency. I think the main issue actually was this piece right here. I wasn't filling up this array. Rank frequency, of course. High card and three of a kind. Am I like reading this right? Maybe I'm just. High card and three of a kind for four, two. This should definitely be. Oh man. 
Yes, this should not be. This should be 14. So many things I forgot to undo. Three of a kind, three of a kind. Okay. Flush, three of a kind, and pair. Okay, let's run that. Okay, cool. So I think I probably I probably could like combine both of these, but I worry that like I can't just say if something's not greater than or equal to three, I just automatically go to the two because I'll, I'll never know if there's like a three later on. But maybe if I start, yeah, I need to I need to always see if there's a three later on before I ever decide to return to two. So here. Let's see, like how, how long would this run? Like suits, this is always gonna be constant time because suits.length is always gonna be five and ranks is always gonna be 13. So like this will be O of five, which is constant. This will be constant. Like I, I really do think that this is actually, I'm almost, am I crazy to think that this is constant space and time complexity? I mean, I guess, I guess, I, I guess. I guess that this could change rank since I mean it could change according to this, but I also feel like it's bounded by this number right here. Like it's never gonna be more than that. Let's see. 91.25. Alright, feeling good about that solution. We're getting some pretty good numbers. Quads and fives. Three conditionals with brief analysis. Let's see what this says. Note that we need to return three of a kind if we have quads or fives. Check out the pattern matching introduced in Python 3.10. It's very powerful. If max s equals min s flush, max counter r values, 543, return three of a kind, return pair, return high card. All right, three conditionals. If all characters in suite are the same, then it's flush. If there are at least three values, and they're just doing a max, okay. If s0 equals s1 equals s2, okay. Else if max greater than or equal to three, int stream of count max get as int. r plus s, python, where range is the upper bound of the ranks. C++ easy. Oh, wait, did I click on something else? I did. Okay, so it seems like we're pretty like in line with what we're seeing in the discussion, which is good. Oh, we're going to start tomorrow. I might actually want to make this. Let me see. This is a very good, this is a very good question. Merge two lists. I think what I'm going to do is I'd like to start tomorrow's stream strong with this one. This is a fantastic question. You can tell, look at the like to dislike. I mean, it's really good because it took me a long time to solve this one, but I'd like to really draw it out for you all and go through it slowly to make sure everyone gets it. So I think I'll save that one for tomorrow. Let's see if we can do this right here. Reverse only letters. Given a string S, reverse the string according to the following. All the characters that are not English letters remain in the same position. All the English characters, lowercase or uppercase, should be reversed. I think what we can do here is we really want to find, I mean, to me, this is like a classic, classic reverse string question. So we're going to create a copy of S. What I want to do is I want to say letter regex. I'll create a new regular expression and I'll set this equal to A to Z or A through Z. Make that global. And then what I can do here is we can get a start equals zero, let end equals zero, equals S, or rather copy dot length minus one. While well, start is less than end. So while start is less than copy dot length and not letter regex dot test s of start. So what does this mean? While our start pointer is not is less than the length of copy and it's not a character, 
right? Because we only want it we want, only want to stop at a character. And then we can do the same thing for the other way. While end is greater than or equal to zero and not letter regex dot test s of end, we'll do end minus minus. Here we can say if start is greater than end, we'll break. Else we'll just go ahead and swap them. What we can do here is we can actually say copy of start, copy of end is equal to copy of end, copy of start, and then we'll do start plus plus and minus minus, and then we'll return copy.join using the quotes. Let's try that out. Output CBAD expected DCBA. So we did, did we not? A, B, C, D, B, A. That's very interesting. C, B, A, D, and we got D, it should be, oh, wait a second. D, C, B, A should be reversed. That's weird. Oh, no, 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 wait. Okay, no, that's fine. That's fine. I'm just looking at this wrong. So what happened here? Let's see what happened here. We have A, B, C, D. We have start. We have end. Okay, so while start is less than copy.length, which it is, and so letter, letter regex dot test S, maybe here, maybe this should be copy, copy of start, All right? That should be true. So if this is true and false, right? Then we shouldn't do anything and end and not letter regex test copy of end m minus minus copy start copy end equals copy and copy start start plus plus m minus minus to me i feel like that should work of course it doesn't like this let's give it a second to run a lot of times i just want to go very fast cbad okay same thing all start is less than end I'm going to assume it's probably this regex up here that's messing me up. This should only return true for letters that are between A through Z and A through Z uppercase. So I'm saying here that if start, while well, start is less than copied out length and not equal to a, right, while well, it's an N and not equal to a character, Letter regex dot text test copy of start that should be true and let me just make sure unless I'm really just const letter equals new regex a through z a through z letter dot test a right and if I do like this that should be false okay is it the global that's messing it up. Maybe, unless perhaps it's this. I've I have used this a lot before in the past, but you can also say copy of start, copy of start equals copy of end, copy of end equals temp. You can try that out, because then this should go to start plus plus and minus minus, we just swapped it. So D and A and then B and C, we swap those. Start is less than end. Let me see if start is greater than end break. That shouldn't be the case, not here yet. Let's try to run this again. Okay, the DCBA. I, I don't know if it was maybe the global or the regex, one of those things. Let's try this one out. J I H G F E D C B A. Looks good. Everything looks good to me here. 73.99. Sweet. Yeah, this is a very common pattern that I use. You're just moving two pointers at different times. 
like you're you're incrementing and decrementing two pointers depending on some condition then you also want a condition just to make sure that like your left one is not greater than the right one just yet you do some swap then you increment decrement and you keep doing that whole thing over and over so with using two pointers we're essentially doing this in one pass and our space time, or at least our space complexity here, I would imagine is O of S, where S is the length of S. So I feel good about this one. And we're just finishing right over the hour. So thank you all so much to everyone that watched today. Again, I hope that this gave you some good things to think about, some good things to chew on while you're doing, while you're going through your Leco journey. journey. I know it's difficult, I know it's tough, we've all been there, I have been there many times, and it's been a lot of fun doing this, so I, I really do hope that, again, you're all getting value from this. That being said, we'll start off strong tomorrow with Merge to Sort of List, fantastic question that I really do wanna take my time on to draw out to everyone. And then from there, we'll just keep going until we hit that 300 question mark. So thank you all so much again for watching, I hope you all have a great rest of your Monday. Let's keep the week going strong and let me know in the comments what your progress is currently like. How many have you done? Do you need help with a specific question? Maybe I can make a video about. Looking forward to chatting with all of you. Hope you have a great rest of your week and see you all tomorrow for another stream at 5 p.m. Eastern. Take it easy, guys. 